My favorite kind of chess is speed chess, and we're gonna watch right now a game that I've been meaning to show you. Two strong players here are going at it. This is from, this was played in Fremont during chess club for the kids. Ted is playing white. Demetrius is playing the black pieces. Standard Nidorf here and g4 g5 this is to get an attack going on the king side and right away you get the pawns rolling white needs to get his king into a safe place and then start attacking on the flank black is hoping to get an attack on white's king before white gets to black but as you can see here, somebody got there first. White is almost there already. And Demetrius looks pretty comfortable right now. But something's going to open up on the king side right now. The G file is going to open up. And the rook is going to go to G1. And we're going to try to make that a strong attack all the way through this game. That will be the theme of this game, is an attack on the king side. Black uses one of white's pawns as a defense. Instead of taking it there and exposing his king, white uses his opponent's pawn as a blockade. No matter how much force you put on that pawn, White's pieces cannot get through his own pawn. So Ted is trying to open up one of the files, and there it is. It's a clo he closes it up, but that diagonal opens, and Black is already in trouble. The diagonal is going to open up, files are going to open up. And it looks like it's going to be defense for black. Materially, it's even. They both have four points. As you can see, black's plan right now is to weaken white's queen side. He's trying to open up the B file for his rook. He's trying to point his queen straight on the C file, straight to the king. And trying to get something going there. Um, the bishop on e7 is also ready to attack on white's queen side. This is the theme to most Sicilian dragon games. A uh, game that you can look up is Bobby Fischer versus Larson in Bobby Fischer's book in his most memorable games. Where Bobby Fischer is trying to get an attack on the king's side, and his theme is sack, sack, mate. And he puts a rook on the seventh, and that's really a thorn in his throat. Fishbone in his throat right now. The two pawns right there, and the rook. The bishop on e7 is under attack, and it's going to be downhill from here. Let's see how he carries it out. Tries to block it off. Blocks off one of the diagonals. But he completely ignores it. And goes for an attack. And that's a piece up. So White's winning materially. And with threats. White just continues to make as many threats as he can. See if you can guess White's next move after Pawn takes Pawn. What's White's next best move right here? Rook on the seventh rank. He goes back and the pawn moves up. Alright, black is going to move. Rook to h4. And I want you to guess this next move. 
pause it. What's the next best move for white? Oh, instead he plays bishop to f6. Black wants to capture that bishop, but that's not going to work because rook to g8 is checkmate. Great Sicilian game. Black resigns here when he puts the when he stops the clock that's usually a sign of resign and they want to play another one so that was a fun and an attacking game it's important that you watch a lot of attacking games it will really help your game the way the pieces move together in harmony the two rooks move um, work together the, t the bishop and the rook the way those work together how does a rook work on the seventh rank how to use it to your advantage and how do you attack the king. Do that in your games and you will surely improve.